Hey, Ryan Hafey with Hafey Digital here. In this video, I'm gonna take you through my checklist of troubleshooting steps that I go through anytime I'm experiencing any performance issues or crashes with Premiere Pro. And if you're a Premiere Pro user, I know you've been there. No time to waste, let's get into it. Whoosh. Let's start with performance issues. So these are things that you'll wanna try if you notice that you're having some slow performance or lagging playback within Premiere. The first thing we're gonna do is go into preferences. So you wanna go up to edit preferences, and we're gonna to go to memory. Now on this window that pops up, take a look at the number next to RAM reserved for other applications. If you're noticing some playback and some performance issues, you may wanna lower this down to anywhere from you know four to eight gigs, depending on how much memory you have to work with. Now I have 64 gigs of RAM in my system, but I typically reserve about six gigs for other applications. Next up, we're gonna go back into preferences. So go to edit preferences, and this time we are going to look for media cache. Now there's a couple things we wanna do here. First of all, if you haven't done this in a while, you may want to go through and remove your media cache files. Having too many media cache files can sometimes bog Premiere down, so it's always a good idea to delete those every now and then when you can. Next, you want to go down to media cache management, and you want to make sure that you are set up to delete your cache files every certain amount of days. I have mine set to 60 days. Next up, we're going to go back into preferences one last time. We're going to go edit preferences, and we're going to go to media. And we want to go down to where it says growing files, and we want to make sure that automatically refresh growing files is unchecked. Now, my understanding is that this feature is more for broadcast purposes, and I guess what it does is it automatically looks for changes in files that you have imported within Premiere, and that can bog some users down. So just uncheck that unless you have a specific use for it. Next up, we're going to go to the program monitor here, and we're going to look and see what our playback resolution is set at. And if you find that your project is playing back slowly, it may be an indication that you just need to lower that resolution a little bit. So wherever it's set at, just go to a lower setting and see if that helps. Another thing that can slow your system down is if Premiere is trying to pull from files that are maybe on a slower drive. You wanna make sure that all of your working files are located on a fast drive, and that's typically an SSD drive, whether it be internal or external. Those are also going to include scratch disks, scratch disks, which kind of serve as temporary storage for Premiere while it's running. Typically you would set this up when you create a new project, but you can also go and check by going to file, project settings, and scratch disks. Just make sure that your scratch disks scratch disks. You just wanna make sure that the paths for those scratch disks are being saved to one of those fast drives. Typically speaking, I just like to have mine set to be in the same place as my project files. Finally, last on the performance checklist is proxies. Proxies are basically lower resolution versions of your files uh, that you can edit with, and then when you go to export, they'll be converted back to the regular resolution so you don't lose any quality. It just allows you to edit a little bit faster because you're using smaller, lower resolution files. Creating proxies is super simple, just select the files that you want to create proxies for, right click, go to proxy, and then create proxies. These settings look okay to me. I typically like to save my proxies next to my original media, but if you want to save them to a specific location, feel free to do that. Then you'll just hit okay and the media encoder will pop up. It will export your proxies and they will automatically be ready for you to edit once that process is done. And you can toggle your proxies on and off by using this little icon here. You see it says toggle proxies when I hover over it. And if this icon is blue like this, and that means that your proxies are on, if you want to turn proxies off and see what it looks like with your full resolution, clips just give it a click and there you go and by the way if you don't see that proxies icon there you can always click this little plus button and find the icon and drag it onto this toolbar and now let's move on to some troubleshooting steps you can take if you're experiencing a lot of crashes and bugs I know we're all familiar with those. Now, first of all, if you notice that you're experiencing issues with a single clip or a single file, it could be that that file is corrupt. Sometimes you can fix that by just removing it from your project and re-importing it. Other times, it just may be that the file is corrupt and unfortunately, there's not gonna be a whole lot you can do there. Sometimes it helps to make a copy of the file in question, give it a different file name, and then import that into the project. It's not foolproof, but it's worth a try. The next thing you can try is changing your renderer. Now, if you notice some playback issues, maybe uh, the clip goes blank, or maybe media isn't loading. Sometimes it can be the renderer that's the problem. So to change your renderer, we're gonna go up to File, Project Settings, General. And on this screen, you will see Video Rendering and Playback. Next to Renderer, just click that drop down and see what options you have and choose one that's not already selected. Now my renderer by default is set to Mercury Playback Engine GPU Acceleration CUDA, which relies pretty heavily on my GPU for playback. So typically speaking, you're gonna get faster playback from that particular renderer. If you go to software only, it may solve some of your glitchy issues, but you may also notice a little bit of a hit in playback performance. So in that case, it's a little bit of give and take. Now let's Let's say you have a particular sequence that's giving you a hard time. What I like to do in those cases is I will create a brand new sequence that matches the settings of the sequence that I'm trying to get to work. 
click OK. And then from the original sequence, I'll just copy everything that's in that sequence. I'll hit Command or Control C, go to the new sequence I just created, hit Command or Control V, and paste those in. And sometimes that may be enough to get things working again, but if not, you may have to take a more extreme measure, and that includes creating a brand new project and then importing your non-working sequences into that new project. I'm gonna go ahead and set up a brand new project here. We're gonna call this one Test project, hit OK. And with this brand new fresh project open, you're just gonna go to File and Import. And then you're going to go look for the project that had the malfunctioning sequence in it. You'll select that and click Open. And from here, you're going to select Import Selected Sequences, click OK. Now, depending on the size of your project, it can take a little bit for all those sequences to load. But once they do, just look for the sequence that you're having an issue with, hit OK, and Premiere will automatically import that sequence along with all of the files associated with it into this new project. Now, one thing to keep in mind here is that it's only going to import the files that are associated associated with that sequence. So if you have other files that were associated with the previous project, you may have to re-import them. And finally, as a last resort, you'll want to check the version of Premiere Pro that you're working with. Now, if your Premiere Pro is out of date, it may be worth updating to the latest version. Or if you are using the latest version and you're still having issues, which does happen, you can actually install a previous version of Premiere that you know works. And to do that, you're just gonna go into the Creative Cloud desktop app. You're gonna click on these three little dots there, click on other versions, and you can go in and install whichever version you need to install. All right, well, there you go. I hope this helps some of you out there, but if it doesn't, well, there's always Adobe support. Happy editing. Scratch disks.